my kid wants to go to Berkeley. The School of Music in Boston that costs a quarter million dollars to turn you into a great musician. Glorious musician. Theoretically. And I would believe it um, is probably pretty universally true. I, I, I would pretty much bet that anybody that comes out of Berkeley is a great musician. They're really good at their craft. Whether or not they go on to become a superstar or work in the business or do whatever, I'm pretty sure you can't go to Berkeley for four years and practice all that time and all that And kind of not stuff. be good. You just, you're going to be good. Good. So think of this for a second. Your kid thinks it's fun to play the guitar. I guess. He says it's fun. Mom, oh, that would be it. fun. Yeah, I'll play the guitar. You want to play a musical instrument? You want to play the clarinet? No, I won't play the guitar. That'll be fun. Or that'll be something. That'll be entertaining, interesting. That'll be a good hobby. What thing do you do, moms? Moms. Moms in your SUVs. And dads. Ooh. Dad's in your chrome-plated pickup trucks. <laughs> With your spray and bed liner. you be afraid to take into the backwoods. <laughs> Don't want to get it dirty. What do you Gotta do? Have a four-wheel drive, though. Moms, dads, whoever. That, that is a, a sort of an athletic thing, and you enjoy it. Like you go to yoga. Mm-hmm. Right? A lot of people go to that. You Do you go to something? You go to boot camp or something. I do. I go to a boot camp. And that lasts, what do you go, it's once a day, once a week? Uh, three times a week. Three times a week for an hour. Mm. You go to boot camp and does somebody really like, get down with it, give me some push-ups, mm. you buzzies. It's a bit of a, the, the word is a bit of a misnomer. No, it's it's a workout okay. conducted by a trainer. And uh, so th- that's an hour three times a week. Imagine that do, doing that 8, 10, 12 hours a day, five days a week. Yeah, that's what Olympic athletes do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's where I want to be careful with this. Gee, it's fun to play the guitar. Okay, maybe you want to just do it until your ears bleed and your fingers are mm-hmm. split open at the Every end. Every day, all day. Kind of st- mm-hmm. Every day, all day. There isn't anything that you do, 14-year-old kid, uh, and... Every day, all day, and that you could compare that to. So mm-hmm. we can't really say it would be like you doing your accounting because you don't do accounting mm-hmm. when you're 12 like dad does or whatever dad does. So we got to put that kind of thing, I think, on the spin about my kid wants to be a musician. And I guess I'm still looking into the idea of him being a musician, not necessarily being a Berkeley graduate and therefore being a super good violin player, but working in the industry as a musician. And that's how he chooses to make his career instead of becoming a cardiologist like your daughter did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm, I'm constantly in that mode because I think that's what music colleges are particularly Berkeley geared toward. So if, if we were then to say, well, what if we didn't really look at it like it was a career, but let's back up a step and say, oh, my kid is however old. I don't know, but he, he kind of wants to play the guitar and he digs all that doom metal and whatever kind of stuff. Okay, I don't dig the style, but I don't care about that. He would like to play the guitar. Or in some kids' cases, geez, like like my friend Brett, his kid digs classical music and and likes. He wanted to go to the symphony and and hear Rhapsody in Blue, and he, he oh, plays fun. the saxophone and he's in the boys' choir and all kinds of stuff. But your kid wants to to play the guitar. What should you do? I'm not asking you now to take a 12 year old and say, well, think 20 years down the road or 10 years down the road, and what would he do in his day to day job when he's an adult and married and has kids and living in some place a million miles from you. What do you want to do right now? How should you deal with this kid? What do you think? Guitar well, lessons? I think that, I think that, uh, you know, if you're a parent that, you know, brought your child somehow to some sort of music lessons, no matter, let's say you started early, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight. And All so right. let's say, Oh, they took piano for a while and then, Oh, we maybe they took violin or or maybe then they wanted to, maybe, let's say it was a boy and said oh here's the guitar mom i want a guitar and give it a guitar and everything 
I mean, as far as what do you do with that? I'm I mean, kind of surprised I heard you say that. Love, <laughs> a boy, we'll a give boy. him a guitar. What would you give a girl? A bass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Give her the badass instrument. That's too. right. Okay. Um, you know, I think parents like. So, what does the child do? Well, there are private um, music organizations like. Uh, um, there's a there's a youth version of the Phoenix Symphony. There's and then there's school band. Uh, they have that in like you know whatever um, middle school. Good. Do they have that still. Yeah, like when, band. Like you know, kid? hey, okay. we're in the band. So so your kid plays flute. trumpet or yeah, or yeah, flute. Yeah. So the kid's gonna be in band at school. Mm-hmm. And then there's marching band when you get to college. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, not college. When, when you get to high school, there's Good. you know the mm-hmm. the band. So that's what the kid is doing. Oh yeah, our kid plays drums or he plays this or that or whatever. Um, and then maybe he's jamming at home with some friends or something so that's that's what's going on, on for the uh, kid on this on the on a rock instrument or well yeah or, i mean like chris always tells me that he was you know he lived in the midwest they had a basement in rackford rackford hey you guys come <laughs> over bring your trumpets over we'll play some of that uh john philip sousa music you know his buddies came over and they jammed in his basement you know um so they're going to they Presumably have some other buddies that play other instruments or maybe similar instruments, and then they get but together and his, say, oh, let's start a band. Uh, buddies and him, they were all like guitarists and stuff, right? Rock player, not playing trumpets. And, or no, were they? correct. It was guitars. And, okay. So you were, you went from school to... I'm just to saying you, you asked, oh, okay, your kid says he wants to play guitar, and then what are you? what is this kid doing? Okay. Besides how, going on to the conversation of... Oh, maybe do you want to go to music school? So the kid, uh, is the kid already playing uh, like in the marching band? Yeah. And now he says, I want to play the rock and roll guitar. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So what do you do? If my kid had never played any instrument or taken any lessons and at, you know, 12 or 13 said, Mom, I want a guitar, I'd be like, okay, well, let's talk about getting some lessons or whatever. So... You know, you don't give a kid a golf club and then don't t- just sure. tell them, oh, just run out and do whatever you want with the golf, yeah, you know. Maybe you do. I don't know. I'm, I'm so, sure. I don't know. I just... if I never had a golf club. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I had a guitar. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay, you buy him a guitar. You, you probably buy your kids lots of things, don't you? They get into soccer, and the mm-hmm. next Especially month they're into guitar, days. and next month God. they're into something else, and next month, yes. and each time you got to drop a few hundred bucks and oh, all that God, kind of stuff, and yeah. geez, what the heck? Okay, so I mean, a lunchbox is seventy five bucks. So let's hope it sticks. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I had to pay seventy five dollars for a lunchbox. I didn't have oh, to. I chose to. Well, I'd only do that if it was GI Joe and Barbie. Planet box. They're great. Mm. So the, the if the. Uh, uh, if we wanted the idea of this investment I'm making in the musical thing with my kid to stick, is it logical to think that l- let's build some success into them? Mm-hmm. Let's in- uh, allow him to enjoy success so he'll say, hey, this is fun. I like playing this guitar or whatever I'm doing. W- wouldn't you want to do that for if he was playing baseball? Sure. Or if, if- she was modeling or if he was modeling. Right. Or whatever. You, you want know, to help you, him be you successful. You don't, do you don't just. Thing. You give him lessons and stuff like that. Exactly. So, so I don't really know what it's like to take lessons these days when you go to the music store, but I presume it's pretty much the same. You take lessons a, at the music store? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, they All the people that they pay minimum wage up front are the. Uh, it's all those kids that you hear me rag on in Craigslist who say they wouldn't play the the trailer parks Mm -hmm. because that's beneath them. Mm -hmm. Well, they get a job over here at the music store making now $10 and 50 cents an hour. That's what minimum wage is. And they're like, they're allowed to grow their hair long, encouraged because then they look kind of like a rock star. Right. It's a job where they can wear whatever they want and have their hair long. Oh yeah. You can deliberately look a little grungy. I want piercings and stuff. Right. Yeah. uh, There's no different than guitar center and and, artsy, you know, mom and pop stores, whatever and stuff like, well, I don't know about mom and pop stores. I don't think we have any of those anymore, but so we, Um, the kid out front, you go into one of the little back rooms that's the size of uh, half of a typical residential bedroom kind of thing, half the size of this little studio. 
and uh, you sit for half an hour with the guy and you get the book and you go through the book and he says, now play this and you go home and you practice or you don't practice and you come back next week. And if you're at the same place, he says, okay, play that again. And if you didn't practice, you could come back for the rest of your life and he could say, well, don't play that. And then if mom gets involved and says, well, how's Timmy doing? <laughs> the guy can say, well, he's still on number two. He's never gone past that for the past 11 months that you've been paying me. But <laughs> right. Whatever. I just, you know, I no, wanted I mean, to see what I was going to do before I said something He'd to you. say, by the way, Mrs. Smith, your son's not doing anything. You know, he's not doing anything. He's not practicing. Or maybe, I don't know. I mean, the ethical thing for any teacher, of course, would be to say, you're not getting anywhere. What, so, uh, how much is that? Do you, do you know? I don't know. I, I don't have any idea. Um, so you're saying like Guitar Center yeah. offers, I, I, I don't know, how much you think? Like $35 an hour? $50 an hour? I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't know. Hmm. But homework, we got to do homework. So the, the, that's one thing to do. And you're, you're, you're dealing then with a, the person that's teaching you, you know, look at the demographics I just described. This is a guy who is maybe he's even a high school graduate, but maybe not. <laughs> Jeez, maybe. And he, he kind of looks like a rock star, but he's, he's sure not, you know, he's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's making minimum wage working in the music store, which means, um, here, go put these, uh, tuners on the rack over there, mm-hmm. you know, go hang these over and then sweep well, all uh, stuff that needs to be done. I all stuff that, yeah, that's right. He's working in the music industry. Right. He's one of those 55% that Berkeley says is working in the music industry. So this is the, the, the master that your kid's going to. So, um, despite any good intents or, or some kind of success that this minimum wage kid might've had as a bedroom shredder it's it's i doubt there's any giant potential there for your kid learning from him and then going man this is really cool this enlightening thing about music i'm really learning a lot and i'm really figuring out how music works and stuff and i like this thanks for buying me this expensive stuff mom i'll do this for another year or mm-hmm. a day or however long they they just i just not seeing that happening mm-hmm. you know pretty soon he's going to go on to something else so um that was my thought tonight is what can we teach this kid that would help him to understand what's going on with the guitar when he plays it and and, and i i kept coming back to the idea of the of private well, lessons <laughs> well that would be sure always you're going to learn quicker there then you're you don't the weakest link is you it's no longer you're at the mercy of the weakest link in the class but the you and i have talked more than once about someone who is a virtuoso mm-hmm. at his instrument <clears throat> and it's never very simple to define. We always have a problem defining the the, the performance part of it versus the, the stored academic knowledge part of it. But one thing that always seems to be universal is that they can play anything. Mm-hmm. Anybody who you were going to say is a virtuoso, you can play anything you want. Um, sure, you name it, I'll play it. Give me the music for the classical guys mm-hmm. or whatever, or or in my case or something, I just play. Yeah, give me a pop tune. As long as I've heard it, I can play it. And every professional musician is mm-hmm. that way, really. I mean, we can just play. We're just used to it. It's again, I always say it's just like carpenters. I'm building a cabinet. Sure, tell me the measurements, and I'll make it. Mm-hmm, the, sure. The same with it. The, they don't have to relearn how to do carpentry just because the cabinet's a different size or anything like that. Same with music. It's all the same. We just play different, slower, well, faster. Well, and it's not so, and virtuoso. is not necessarily like one singular instrument. Like for you, it's you, I call you a strings virtuoso. You can pick up a banjo, a ukulele, any one of these guitars in here and, mm-hmm. and play it. And again, here, oh, as long as I've heard it or if it's a pop tune, just like you just said. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so the, 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 the definition of the, what makes me a good musician is probably what I'm, I'm thinking about in terms of this, where do I send my kids to lessons and things like that? I want my kid to learn exactly what I was just describing. The idea that he can go, oh, I've heard that song on the radio, and I can now play it. I can do that. Mm-hmm. Sure. Every professional musician I've ever known can do that. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure, I hear that. I can play that. Everybody does that. We hear a thing on a commercial, 
and it goes meow, 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 meow. And the rest of the day we're walking around going meow, meow, meow. Mm -hmm. We're just duping what we heard. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we do as musicians. We dupe exactly what we just heard. And we're just a little more focused on it than the average person that's just walking around. So uh, I want to be able to just play anything that I want. In, in this kid's case, and we're not talking about being a studio musician, anything that's handed to me by some ad agency or something. This is now anything that I want. It's all this shoegazer stuff and, and all the junk that all these kids are talking about that you and I don't know what it is even. Mm -hmm. So if you could just play anything you want, I'm defining that as as the goal mm -hmm. of of learning my instrument my guitar and so i want to find a teacher that can do that for me for my kid for whatever well i think it's important to you know <clears throat> we're, we're assuming the age of this student is you know a, a teenager or you know slightly before you know maybe 10 sure. 11 12 um much more if you ask them what adult, they yeah. yeah if you ask them what they want to play their their answer may be short so I think that it's important that the teacher, you you want to take some direction from your student, you know, to say like, oh, they kind of like this, or they seem to be excelling at this. But at the same time, you also want to, if it were me, I would want to help them be well-rounded. It doesn't mean that you have to mm -hmm. go play Christopher Cross, you know, and you, you know, you, you, Probably 12 year old very, you don't even know who that is not very popular yeah. but if christopher cross had some sort of like fingy, yeah fingering or something that would be something good to know and applicable you know that's mm -hmm. that um it's, it's, it's about being applicable learning the things oh you know i ask you like oh play a g chord you're like well which one you know let them know the vast differences and opportunities there are in your instrument mm-hmm and if you look at how many times you and I have uh, on the air and otherwise dissected a song mm -hmm. and we said, okay, when we break down the song, it does this and it does that. And this is just like the other song we dissected the other day. It does, it's just faster. It's in a different key and it has different lyrics. Mm -hmm. hmm. It does these same two chords right here. It does the same thing here. This is really <laughs> common. This happens all the time. There's all these similarities going on in music. Like Green Onions. Like and green and onion. um, uh, Route 66. And Route 66. <laughs> yeah. and, and Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. Mm -hmm. They all fit together. And Amazing Grace and the theme from Gilligan's Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> they all fit together. Exactly. And seeing the the similarities between these songs is what music education is all about. <clears throat> There's only sure. a few notes we can play or sing on our instrument. I can only play about two and a half, three octaves of notes on my guitar. So if I just memorize those, you know, 30 notes or whatever it is, well, that's pretty much it. Now, the only thing I got to do is recall it and make it sound like Route 66 or Green Onions or whatever it is that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So that part is the artistic, musical, fun, subjective part of things that I can do once I have the objective, physical, mathematical, academic kind of approach to the instrument. I got to know how to tune it. Mm -hmm, that's sure. the simplest of the academic part. You know, that's very, very mathematical. And you, you hook a tuner on or you do something and you, you just, when the light turns green and all that kind of junk. And so, so see, that's nothing at all creative or musical. And, and the same is true with everything that you do physically to the instrument. When you finger a chord on a guitar or on a piano, or you play a note on a trumpet or a clarinet or anything like that, you're, you're just holding your fingers in one spot. The music is what comes through all your, remember all that weird stuff? It comes mm -hmm. through all your weird hooky pooky brain or your chi or your chakra or your mushroom right. coffee or something <laughs> or your jeebus. And, <laughs> and jeebus. you turn the, the, the emotional part of it into the thing. But you, all you're doing is holding your fingers down on this instrument, this mm -hmm. hunk of metal or wood or whatever the thing is. And so I got to get a teacher that will teach me how to do all that stuff. And, so that I'm good enough at it, I can then divorce myself from it. Sure. I got to not be thinking every split second about holding this note down on the guitar. 
I got to just go, oh, just play a G chord. Okay, boom. Eep. No worries. I can concentrate on singing and making it sounding romantic or funny or happy or sad or whatever I'm trying to do with this song. So how am I going to find a teacher that's going to teach me that? What's the deal? Boy, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, you could listen to our podcast and you're going to find somebody that way because, you know, somebody would find you. But, I mean, you're available on the Internet. That's how people search for most everything these days. Probably. Or they're going to ask their core group of people, hey, you know, your Johnny took uh, guitar lessons. What, you know, what's that guy or gal's name, you but, know? But what do we, what is it that that allows me, a a young guitar player, to learn that idea of I can play anything? What? What puts me in that frame of mind? It's, it's this frame of mind I'm trying to do that you can't really teach me that frame of mind. You can teach me all this fingering and all that stuff, all the academic stuff. You can't put me in the frame of mind, but there is something that will put me in that frame of mind. You and I discuss it pretty frequently. You saw it when you went to San Diego or whenever you went, when that kid came to the thing and played with those other guys. Confidence. We can play with other people. We just play with others. We need to play with other people. Sure, that exchange of, mm -hmm. you know, performance, perform together, um, what happens when we play our instruments mm -hmm. together. I guarantee you that the places that I will teach your teenage son to place his fingers on his guitar in order to play an E minor chord would be exactly the places that they will teach you at Berkeley. He will just have the, the benefit of 4,000 kids there who play other instruments to ensemble with. What a wonderful thing that is. Right. So we need to teach our kids the nuts and bolts of the guitar. Yes. And the simplest way to translate that is, look, just make it into reading music. It's just that simple. Don't don't let him goof you up on this, I don't want to read music, it's too hard nonsense. You want to play the guitar, good for heaven's sakes, and you want to you know, look like a big shredder guy and they stand up on one foot and do all that stuff. And You want to do some difficult stuff in your life, you know, learn to read stupid music. It's not that hard. And there's a big benefit from it you will get all that relationship between all the different song things. You'll hear the yeah, one it, it song brings, and you'll say, it sounds you know, just like that song. For yeah. the musician that has made some sort of proclamation that he or she is not going to learn to read music, you're, you're going to burn. <laughs> I mean, you're going to burn out real fast. I mean, reading the music, it brings depth to your, you know, to your playing, to your relationship with, your instrument to the relationship that happens when you play with others. I mean, mm. so you, that's I how that you, works. Yeah, that's I mean, what I see people seeing when they look at music that you can look ahead in the music and, and you're not even hearing it, but you're looking at, it, you go, okay, there's the chorus. It repeats. Look at that. It repeats down here and you're looking ahead 12 bars or 16 bars or something. And you say, there's that little figure again, all that kind of stuff. What a, mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Uh, so get a teacher that will teach your kid how to learn actual legit guitar. Sure. The kid's got a million resources for learning all the wanker stuff that he wants to learn, all the heavy metal <laughs> riffs and all that kind wanker. of stuff. Don't worry about that. He's got <laughs> that covered. What is that word, wanker? Wanker? <laughs> if you don't know. That's not a wank. That's not a word. Yeah, he's a wanker. You wanker. <laughs> yeah, I think it means like I Puts. Think it means masturbating. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? He's wanking. <laughs> so you're a wanker. Okay. So, but see, he's got all that covered. He's going to learn, even if you don't give him lessons, he's going to go all the, the YouTubes and his buddies and all that junk and, and learn how to play those riffs that he wants to learn how to play and how to have all the equipment and the, all that kind of junk. Lisa's doing something weird. I think she's maybe No, I'm not. I took there. out what my... It's like a little what doing wooden massager. Oh, you're doing a little shiatsu on your <laughs> shiatsu, on your shiatsu. Okay. So uh, uh, that's the thing. The other thing that, and this is kind of elusive, and we got to deal with this in more than one segment. But Berkeley is going to immerse you so deeply into the concept of being with other musicians that you will get this great feel for what it will be like in the real world. 
You've heard me talk about working in L.A. and I worked. You think a lot. they they introduced that right away? That concept right away? Yes. Working in the real world? Yeah, okay. and I'll show you why. In, Go on. In, in L.A., I worked in in Capitol Records and I worked in Gold Star Records. They're about six blocks apart, stuff like that. I went over to Les Paul's house when we had a break and he'd work on your guitar and he was three blocks down the street, stuff like that. You literally walked everywhere. You couldn't park anywhere. There wasn't any place to park. And, and you were. And why you, would you when it was five blocks? Yeah, you just had to walk over there. Even if I had to go buy a new guitar down at Guitar Center, I could go down there and be back in 20 minutes by walking. You could never do that by car and it would cost you a mint to park and all that kind of stuff. So you just walked everywhere. And you were constantly around. 10 billion other musicians. Okay, so go to Berkeley. You probably live in what they call the residence halls, which has two, three, or four people per room. They Mm -hmm. don't have a campus like you and I might think of a campus here. Maybe it's more of what happens on the East Coast generally, but it's they have one building, like they have the 150 building. Mm -hmm. It's 150 something street. And and that has like whatever they have, you know, piano things and stuff. And then the two or three buildings down the street, not connected, they'll have the room where all the the recording studios are and stuff like that. So there's little buildings separated by other regular non-related businesses mm-hmm. where you and I would think of Arizona State <laughs> University as like a big city on its own. It has all that stuff. It has banks and coffee shops and restaurants and police departments and stuff. Well, the college in Boston means you go to this building and then, gee, it sounds just like me. You get done with this class and then you walk three doors down the street or a couple blocks across the street and you go to the other thing for your next class and all that stuff. So you probably live in the residence halls, which are another building Mm -hmm. right there. And those are some old converted, you know, Boston, Brownstone, whatever they call them. Pods, probably. And and they got... uh, like a kitchen in the middle or whatever. In the well, rooms. most of them know. They don't. They have a dining hall. These are old mm-hmm. uh, apartments and stuff like, you know, uh, and four kids in them now mm-hmm. in bunk beds and stuff like that. So you're extremely squeezed into a little bitty space and you're constantly going to the thing and you can't really go anywhere. There's no way to park a car. So you couldn't go driving to New York or something. Right. Sure. Uh, you'd spend a, a million dollars to to store your car there. You can't ride a bicycle because there's no place to park a bicycle. You can't take a bike into any of the classrooms or the dorms. You'd have to just park them on the street in in downtown Boston and time, you know, chain stolen. them to the thing. And I'm sure that gets stolen pretty quick. And there's no reason to. You don't need a bicycle to go anywhere anyway. So you are locked in to that thing. So I think that concept right there. It's that's sort of by you, design. That's giving so you exactly, you can, yeah. yeah. That's saying this is what Lumpy was doing. Yeah, you're immersed. And this is what you'll. This is what you could be doing if you were. You'd be this immersed in it, and you'd probably be that immersed in it no matter what. I mean, even if you're playing in the symphony or something, you'd be that. Like I said, do yoga nine hours a day, five days a week. It's mm-hmm. that kind of concept. So they're immersing them, as you say, by design. I'm mm-hmm. sure. Sure. To get Especially you to think of that. Especially like freshmen. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, these kids are probably. A long wait from home, or just away from home, probably Basically for the high first school time. Kids, we just yeah. got done being goofy high right. school kids for the first time, and without you know parent parental supervision. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, they want to sort of keep them close. And I kind of wonder about keep that them focused because I know when I went to college, and and probably when you did too, we had all the the pull and the influence of all the the fraternities and sororities and the let's go get drunk and let's go crazy. Oh yeah. Football team and stuff. And well, they don't have any of that at birth free for the first time. You know, it's like, uh, Hey dude, you want to go get a beer? No, I'm practicing. Screw you. I'm practicing. God, don't even invite me (laughs) ever. I'm practicing. No way. And so, uh, I wonder what's that is like to that. uh, I'm still just a high school mentality and show up and stuff like that. You know, sometimes, uh, I think it's called ratemyprofessor.com, hmm. something like that. It's, Boy, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. You can go there, and I read a couple of them about Berkeley, and I can see, you know, there's stuff that I feel like they didn't value me as a person, and my teacher <laughs> thought she was really good at her instrument, which I guess she is. 
but she didn't see my side of the thing. No, come on, you idiot. She is really good at her instrument. That's you're why she paying, works at Berkeley. That's why she's the professor. That's right. <laughs> and you're the, the peon and didn't value you as a person. That's really not what you're here for. Mm-hmm. You know, did she hit you or something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you're saying... You're mad because she gave you an assignment she gave and you an expected assignment. you to yeah. finish it because in order you, to get a grade? You didn't value my yeah. viewpoint on the musical concept because I'm an idiot and you're not and I don't know, whatever. But you, so you see stuff like right. that. So, that's and, two and, sides of your story, so but whatever. it sounds like bullshit to me. Uh, so I think that's the point uh, of of all of that is don't worry so much about this put your kid into college to graduate and go in the music industry and stuff like that. We'll figure all that out later. But in the meantime, let's, let's figure out how to get him really to be a guitarist. And then let's assume guitar here, but anything, the other ones are easier because all the other instruments are going to teach you based on reading. You don't go learn to play the trumpet without learning to read music. Saxophone, just doesn't trombone. work. That way, right? no, you just going <clears> to <throat> learn to read no matter what. There is no other way. Nobody just comes in and says, dude, let's do this hot riff from this metal tune on trumpet. On trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not right. going on. The four or five songs that you do learn to do that with on trumpet, you're done with, and then you got to right. do something else. But then you go call but guitar, her Please, Albert. parents, get your somebody who will teach your kid legit guitar. If you found legit. some guy who is like a, a, a big rocker guy, and he's teaching him some, you know, fine. Have that, too. Mm-hmm, if you want, sure. there's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, you can have your kid in the little league and then get him batting coaching on the side too and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Darling Donna goes and takes horse lessons. Oh, yes, that's even that's after that's all these years, and even after the horse throws her off and breaks her right. ribs, Ooh, they're gosh. all healed now. So is they, she all healed? Yeah, and nice. she's been riding the horse the, the very same butthead horse in, oh, in the very boy. same spot Poor Harley with the very same teacher. And you can bet that every time there's a uh, mountain bike, that's what caused the uh, oh yeah the, the horse the to dumping. Spin. Yeah, it wasn't Harley; it was Magnum. Magnum the other. Oh, the Magnum! Other I'm sorry. The blonde horse. Yeah. Well, that's okay. You're 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 not disrespecting them as a person, right? <laughs> Whatever. So mm. go to Berkeley if you want, but in the meantime, learn how to play the guitar and learn it for real. Mm-hmm. And, and that way the kid will get, we'll go into more why that makes you feel that way. Cause we just touched on some of the things that, and, and Lisa was getting it and she doesn't read music. And then well, little I, by little I, know I said, how, Hey, but... look at this. And you said, yeah, Hey, wow. <laughs> like that's romantic. But... Yeah. So, um, uh, I took it, piano lessons. Come it'll, on now. It'll, it'll, really? What what's, do you mean really? I the, told you about Mrs. Cham. What's the key signature for G sharp? Gives a shit. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. I know the basics um, I know of I'm reading music. You think? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what does Allegro mean? Wait, hey, you know, Mrs. Chan never told me the goddamn key signature oh, for a G sharp. Mrs. Chan. Aww. That should have been Mrs. Chan. You should have been. D- no, d- it's Cham. Oh, okay. Not like Jam, not Jan, All like right. Jan Brady. Mrs. Cham. <laughs> Mrs. Cham. Thank you, Mrs. Cham, for leaving out. The- it was a trick question. There is no key of G sharp. Ha ha ha. Very fun. Take lessons somewhere. Take lessons from somebody who would teach your kid how to play the guitar so that he gets fulfillment out of the thing. Sure. I'm trying to say this without sounding like, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's all so heady and everything. Right, sure. I want him to, to feel like it, hey, that sounded good. Right. There has to be some depth to the actual lessons, you know. And, and I think we're really only going to prove that out by sending him to some place to perform like the listening room phoenix dot com mm-hmm. that like we were reading about in the other segment. Or, he or needs the guy to like- do that. He needs to play somewhere and people like him and clap and applaud and he needs to feel that. And then he'll know and you'll know if he digs that concept of being the performer. Sure. And if he doesn't, that's fine too because there's 10 billion other jobs that are not performers that he could still do. And it's sure. just as glorious and you can still get green M&Ms and all that stuff. Do you think that, um, like, uh, I don't know, remember I told you the story of the the kid that we saw that sat in with the jazz ensemble when we were mm-hmm. over in Carlsbad? Do you think Craigslist would be a reliable place for a kid to find a place to sit no, in? No, <laughs> not at all. So where does a kid find a place to sit in? Or like parents are like, hey, we want our kid to sit in. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Where do you look? You find a uh, you find a teacher that plays. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, something like that. Um, you go to a place where there's one of those combos that you're de- describing, like mm-hmm. you saw in Carlsbad, if you can find one. And you, you, when the guys take a break, you go, do you guys teach guitar? You probably ask the guitarist. Do you teach guitar? 
you could probably ask the pianist, and he could do that too. Besides playing bass over here with his left hand and changing the light bulb with his right hand, he can also teach guitar. But yeah, take lessons from those guys. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that are sitting there in that restaurant playing every day, Mm -hmm. and they know what to cut through and say, well, look, when you're playing, do this, and this will big, big shortcut. And suddenly you're good at performing, and you get that feeling of performing. So there's the deal. So before we leave, I want to do something. Um, Previously, we have talked about and read from the audition sheet from Berkeley. And uh, Berkeley publishes it online and you guidelines uh-huh, welcome for auditioning. to download it. Uh, please do. And, and it tells you exactly what to expect in the guidelines. And uh, one of the things that we they talk about in the guidelines, uh, why don't you read them all for you've got them over there. The headliner, right? the headlines, uh-huh. the four things I think that we've Which done before. are improvisation. They're Bl- going to ask you to improvise. Okay. Blues. Blues. They're going to ask you to play 12 bar blues. Reading. They're going to ask you to read something. And ear training. And ear training. That's right. They're going to they're going to uh, throw some ear training things at you. Call Maybe and response call exercises. And respond. Yeah, they're going to say, here's a G. What note is this? And that kind of stuff. So the either the first one or the second one there, uh, improvising or 12-bar blues, those are the, not necessarily very exclusive. <laughs> they could do one of the both. Here's the deal. I will audition now for Berkeley with the 12-bar blues or the, the improvising thing. At your choice, lovely Lisa, you, the person who knows uh, enough about music, to say if I ask you to pick any key you would like, I will play 12-bar blues in that key. A. A, alpha. Okay. I hope I pass the audition. listening on this here our first podcast of the new year 2018 go play your instrument sing your song and don't die with your music